Yes. Hey, Thomas. Is that fine? Check, 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 check. <clears throat> Should the um, will the recording be? Uh, will everyone else be heard in the recording? Because it is a discussion. Oh well. Yes, you'll need the handheld mic. As usual. Yeah. This is the corollary to Murphy's Law. If anything bad can happen, it happens to me. <laughs> and we are in Ireland. Murphy is local. And yeah. Unfortunately, you can't pre-record a discussion. Yeah. Can't pre-record a discussion. But that's OK. Uh, I wanted to come here. And I'm so happy to see everyone. Uh, it's been a long time. So uh, whenever. Whenever they say go, we'll start. <clears throat> you can talk about radio frequency in the, in the meantime. The what? Radio frequencies, if I remember you would tell. Oh, yeah. That was a long time ago. I don't remember much, actually. Um, I can tell you a story, though. Um, at the time when I was looking for a job, I, um, I couldn't find one. And so for the... So I finally did this thing where I recorded my resume on a CD, and then I had I designed like a Smith chart uh, front cover for the CD and printed it on the CD, and that's what I gave out as my resume. And <laughs> just going like, you know, above and beyond. Nobody will do these things. But I needed the job that badly. So. I should go ahead and start. People can hear you, but at some point the mic will turn off, so I'll be able to hear you even better. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Hi. This is going to be not a presentation. I'm just going to uh, have these slides. I purposefully did not upload the slides because I wanted input from you uh, to figure out what we need to do next with regards to S bombs. So the objective for this BOF is to first understand the tooling landscape. And what I'm hoping we get as an outcome is a list of tools and what they do. Uh, we identify missing functionality based on what folks are using SBOMs for, and next steps to fill in the gaps for that functionality. And then objective two is to try and improve tool accuracy. Um, we would like a co some common knowledge on where exactly do people store their metadata and where the tools are looking to find that metadata. And I'm just going to be editing the slides as we go, but that's by design. <laughs> this is a. This is supposed to be like 45 minutes, maybe, but it's just a starter. Uh, people can always like, um, you know, use this as their uh, sounding board and complain about stuff. Uh, and then we'll find a place to slot that in and follow up with the discussion later online, next time we meet, etc. Um, we want to. Uh, see what language ecosystems need the most help with generating that SBOM, and then uh, what tools we can uh, create to help the language ecosystems. So I'm your facilitator. My name is Nisha Kumar. I'm a security engineer at Oracle. I was previously at VMware. That's how I managed to get into the conference circuit. Um, I poke my nose into communities like SPDX, uh, OCI, oh, that's Open Container Initiative, not uh, Oracle um, Cloud Infrastructure. I have to 
keep those two acronyms in two separate places in my brain and they often cross. Um, if anyone's at the NTIA or uh, CISA SPOM working groups, they'll find me there. Um, and various other SBOM communities, I look like that purple cuttlefish on the internet. So if you see that coming up on a Zoom screen, that's me. Uh, ask me later about why that is. Yay, the mic's on. <laughs> okay, I don't have to yell that much. Okay, um, let's level set first. Why do we need SBOMs? I've started off with a few that come easy. Uh, first is the executive order which lots of people have already memorized that number. Uh, the other one is to find log4j, which my company has been struggling with, uh, as probably uh, a lot of other companies. Uh, the third one is to find Libraska. I stole that from a uh, Julia Fieroli's uh, presentation. So, and some people have actually memorized the XKCD about the infrastructure and the one guy in Nebraska uh, who is uh, maintaining it. So, um, you know, the, the second and third one tells me like, you know, uh, there is a search component with regards to SBOMs rather, rather than us uh, looking for these things, we would like our, we would like suppliers to just give it to us uh, and make our lives easier. So that's one generic thing. Anyone using S bombs for anything else? Yes, Thomas. Well, I know where our supplies of security come, but uh, we shouldn't. So I I know where our supplies of security come, but what was missing? Licensing. Mm -hmm. simply allow it, doesn't allow you to use it, then it doesn't matter that it has security vulnerabilities. If the license is unacceptable, then yeah, there's no point of looking even at the package. The the second thing which I actually well should be giving some talks over is we also can use S bombs to basically actually optimize our engineering stack. Because that's commonly forgotten that basically it's only look you don't look at your optimizing your consumption you have lots of problems in compliance. So a lot of the security problems I looked at, it's like the first question should be, why the heck are we using this piece of open source in the first place? Uh, what are other teams are using? And if you have bombs, you can just look like, oh, I know that the other team in my company is doing something similar. Oh, let's look at our bomb. What are they using? Oh, they're using this other open source library. So why don't we align the company to use the same open source license uh, open source packages and whilst we're at it we might also look at like using similar versions so that we basically can do can do reduce the uptime the, the the maintenance of it so we're having to upgrade to newer versions so this is literally what we did in my company we had a, uh, <laughs> an sdk team 10 different components five different teams basically using the same open source they complained about the compliance the sbom model stuff I said like, well, why don't you just align on a common engineering stack and a common set of dependencies? Makes it a lot easier. I know it's not as sexy as security, but for me, security is reactive. Let's do things proactive and look at the engineering stack itself and start with upstream. So a number of us who have uh, worked in the compliance space really focus on hygiene. Um, but I also understand that a lot of people have more Pressing issues like cleaning up. Um, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just came <laughs> from a, another talk uh, about S bombs. Apply to the AI field where it allows for uh, the, the traceability, whether or not, depending on, I mean, there could be multiple use cases, but applying it to AI to get insight in the model and the data set, and maybe up to the point where actually, as an organization, you're reporting on the usage of those uh, AI algorithms. Is it for the algorithm or for the data set? Um, and there they were talking about both the, the, the model and the training data set. And there's, a pex, uh, there's a, something going on already to model that within SPDX. 
So I, I would say that falls under use case. That's another use case, but it seems to still be like a transparency thing, uh, trying to f uh, find something and evaluate whether we need it or not. Yeah, is it good? Is it not good? So, um, yeah, anyone have any other whys? Yeah, the so that's... Well, basically integrity check of artifacts. So, mm, does integrity checking for artifacts mean that you have to have an SPOM for the artifact? Uh, no, but it's a useful tool. Okay, how is that useful? So, for example, when you, when we, for example, we produce uh, releases with lots of artifacts, like a bunch of binaries, source code, and we have tools for to verify all of those to see if nothing's sort of there. Okay, so rather than hash each of the artifacts, you create an yeah. SPOM of the artifact and so check the integrity. You have to hash it inside, so. Okay. Uh, so it's like a integrity check for every release. Exactly. That's cool. I didn't think about that one. Um, uh, how, about, uh, I keep, how do you pronounce your name? Nadav. Nadav, sorry. Never mind. Anyhow, if you would like to do prioritization and uh, risk management, you need the whole picture. Um, so this is one. And as far as uh, I, I, I know, it's very important for legal agreements. I mean, often legal agreements say that if you have CVSS above this, this and that and it's discovered, it must be fixed within seven days, 30 days, 90 days. Depends on severity and other issues. Anyone else have uh, ideas or uh, what they're looking f uh, for SBOMs to do for them? Um, how? Trademark compliance. Only compliance. You're like compliance guy. I, I get a lot of the questions whether you can do it. So basically, the question is always in our software stack, do we use c software from country X? Uh, actually, but it's actually also the other side. It's not only trademark compliance. We also get some companies that do not want to use open source software from our competitor. Mm -hmm. So it, it falls under risk management. Is anyone here um, just focusing on vulnerabilities and is not really that um, interested in like the general risk management hygiene picture? No, everyone's like, no, we know that's gonna happen, but this thing is more important than, uh, this thing solves a whole lot of other problems other than the vulnerabilities, that's what uh, the group understands. Okay, uh, sounds like we're in agreement with that. Okay, so it's a, it's a pretty sophisticated group right now. Let's go through whether we have all our tools in place. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't upload this to uh, SCED is because I've been in a bunch of SBOM talks and I've been like curating the tools that everyone is talking about and whether um, whether they are uh, what they do and uh, what they're targeting. So I have here a list of tools. Um, of course, turn is the first one because that's the one I know the most because uh, I'm the maintainer. Uh, so um, I. Everyone knows these set of tools, right? Yeah. Am I missing anything? Uh, you're missing a lot of tools and you need to make some corrections. Oh, go ahead. So uh, SIFT can do transform. Okay. And ORT can do consume to a certain level. We use, uh, you can define package managers that are not supported in SPDX and an ORT will consume it. Only with 3.0 will fully support all of the things. How does uh, SIFT transform? So the transform in, in the, um, it's between the, they, so for say from SPDX to Cyclone DX or to their internal format, 
Oh, okay. And, and back and so you can do the. F I understood always transform was basically from one S1 format to to the other. Okay. Huh. Bomb also supports consume. Oh, uh, not consume. Yeah. So, so consume means consume S bombs in any uh, oh. in any of the formats. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So and there is the Microsoft uh, Microsoft uh, S bomb tool. Ah, it's yeah. It's it's oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that just generates, or can that? Generate, produce. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I've, I've listed only open source tools because our main goal over here is to um, figure out what tools the community as a whole can use. Uh, and so there may be some features in the tools like SIFT and um, any of the other, like Trivi or something like that, uh, that may not be available in the community version, and I'm not really sure what features are available and what features are not available. Yes. Yeah, that would be my oh. next question to ask about. Is it just the open source tools? In that case, I know of another tool, but I'm not even going to mention it. I think it's good to focus on the open source tools. Yeah, okay. Um, I have a couple of open source tools in the trust source stack. Um, they are uh, for different package managers and they directly create S bombs uh, in the SPDX or, or Cyclone DX format. Okay. Um, you find them all under GitHub uh, slash trust source. Trust source, okay. Oops. Is it trust dash source? Typo. C -E. C E. There we go. Great. And that just produces. Uh, they are designed to produce, yeah. Okay. Um, Art is not. Theoretically, you can go to the package manager. Then, sorry. Um, you can go. Uh, Perhaps it's not the best uh, practice, but you can go to the, the, the package managers and, and produce uh, something which is akin to an S-bomb. Yeah, uh, true. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about whether that's a good idea or not later. The bomb tool from package.com. That's, uh, sorry, I got it. Bomb tool, right? Oh, no, no, it's it's another one. That is says, bomb. yeah, everything is bomb tool here. Okay, this uh, is S bomb tool, yeah, I know. I think I have it over here, uh, and it's like right at the bottom. Uh, uh, on this, I have it over here in this table, it's just not seen because uh, I'm terrible at no, formatting. No, it's the Kubernetes uh, bomb, and the other is part of uh, PKG call. Yeah, I'm it's just going to see, like, oh, oh, so it's not visible. Yeah, yeah that's oh, what I meant. Okay. There. I'll remove it from there. Anyway, yeah, I got that one. Yeah, it's uh, it's pro produces. And oh, it's, uh, it produces. Does it produce for anything in particular? Uh, C and C++ packages. That's cool. That I think that's like the one ecosystem that doesn't really have a package manager. So mm -hmm. um, things that use like make. <coughs> and, uh, if Zephyr, they have some S bombs, but I have no idea how they produce it and whether they use some of these tools. Yeah. So um, I am. I think that we should look at standalone tools that anyone can use rather than rely on a build system to generate it for us because there are some <coughs> in for OSs there are tools that actually like build the whole OS and then the final part of it is generating the S bomb uh, that's a lot of work for just like regular Joe developer to set up and run um, so we're looking for things that they can um, 
set up on their workstation and run or put in a CI CD pipeline and run like a GitHub Actions kind of thing. Because um, the, the aim for the, this discussion is to figure out how we can make this as ubiquitous as, we, as possible. So, you know, we don't have to burden people when we say like, okay, give me a, uh, <laughs> give me an S-bomb. Where's, where's your S-bomb? Um, so, okay, does anyone have any other tools? I, I was going to mention Docker and uh, Yocto, but since you've just said that, I won't. <laughs> You're missing the Cyclone DX standard tools. So, like Cyclone DX Maven plugin, they have like 150 of them on the website. So, this makes Cyclone DX Star or something like that for all the Cyclone DX ones. And then uh, the one which is called. Uh, it's let me see if I can still find it. Oh, oh yeah. Cycl uh, sorry, Fos Is Fos that is that something that uh, is that something like anyone can use? Like is yeah, set up. It does a number of things though, right? Not just produce as bombs. It's it's more full stack application almost with the UI and all that stuff. So it's not like a CLI thing that you can run by itself. Yeah. So uh did you actually go back to the previous slide? I just want to check if we have the whole list. Yeah, in case you this I have a like a there's a there's this web page that has awesome S bomb management, the GitHub page, which actually lists a lot of them already. So I was just checking which one we have on the list. Why didn't you say so <laughs> instead of me going <laughs> through this? <laughs> yeah, but that's that's all the compliance tools that are out there pretty much. There's not all the SBOM tools, and we're, we're looking for just the SBOM ones. So what's the name of the thing? Awesome S bomb. A, a awesome and then S bomb all caps. That's basically so is uh, is that there's the list page that lists all of the a lot of the S bomb things. So it explains what an S bomb is. It shows the tools. I actually need to add water there. And it captures uh, blogs and videos and slides, podcasts <laughs> about S bomb. Everything is there. Okay. Um, so let's look at this table, I think we have enough, and um, figure out what functionality is missing uh, because, uh, you know, uh, in the end we wanted, we have, we have several functions that we're looking to for response. We want to be able to find, um, find a certain package with a certain version. Uh, we want to be able to figure out what the risk of uh, using a package is. Um, we'd like to apply it to various um, use cases and um, integrity checks. So do we have tools that like identify SBOM, like a package in an SBOM or parse SBOMs? Yes. Uh, BOM has a query, small query language, which you can feed it um, an SBOM and query, for example, uh, packages by uh, P URL type or by name, or uh, it's simple right now, but uh, I've been adding the use cases as I've been needing them. Okay. And can it do it for any BOM? Like any SPDX. Any SPDX, yeah. okay. As long as it's uh, 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 well formatted, so if it has a <laughs> yeah, if it uh, if if the if the syntax is not right, it will. Uh, okay. Error, yeah. Let's uh, let's assume for now that all of SPDX's um, conformance checkers are oh, working oh, 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 <laughs> perfectly. Of, of course it is. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, assuming that all the SPDX uh, conformance checkers are perfect, 
In then you should be able to. Uh, the, the other is that it also lets you like visualize the structure of the SOMs. So it'll show you a tree view of how packages and files are. Uh, I mean, it's a simplified view because, as we know, the the SBOM is a mesh, is a like a graph, not a, a tree. But it will use the the first um, the first relationship it finds to build a tree of what contains what. Uh, can that functionality be separated from the bomb tool? Mm, I'm I'm planning to spin it out to a library of its own, but not, it's not there yet. But maybe. Yeah, if, if I mean we can work on that. Okay. Uh, anyone else have uh, ideas on what to use? Um, one, um, often the names produced by different tools are not the same name for the same uh, package. I don't know if it's um, gaps in functionality, but often when you try to compare different tools, it's an issue. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the accuracy bit. We'll get to that in uh, just a little bit. Maybe they, they accurately identify it, but they have a bit of a different name. Sometimes, you know, with the lib in the name, without the lib in the name, stuff like this. But it's enough uh, to, 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 to cause a bit of a mayhem. And then we have a major issue, I think, uh, when we don't have uh, uh, proper metadata, proper uh, 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 package managers. So CCPP, it's, it's, it's a major issue. But also uh, we have issues with the stuff that are brought in during uh, um, not too great build processes, for example. I mean, usually those, uh, 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 I mean, usually software that does it, it works, as, uh, uh, works best when the build is great and the package managers are great <coughs> and, and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, what will you just uh, pass the mic over there? Uh, so perhaps uh, you just mentioned the standalone. I understood standalone in the sense of, okay, I'm a project and I need a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, but perhaps we could also be more accurate here uh, to say, okay, is the use case rather you an organization that needs to manage several bill of materials or uh, what is the perspective from, for example, one open source project that needs an SBOM tool? Because then if we would distinguish here, I would also list software 360 uh, because, but that is rather a hub, right? For, for S bombs where mm -hmm. you also want to map, okay, different projects, who uses what and, and all this stuff. But I think that would be then another level. So what is the scope? In yeah, here? that's a, that's a good question. And I should have put that at the level set thing. Um, the scope here is just, um, Considering that, you know, there is uh, a need to do it and everyone is in their own little silo, um, each one may have different um, use cases, either centralized or like just have their developers generate an SBOM for each one of their projects or have a team generate SBOMs for each release. Um, consider thinking about that, uh, rather than uh, rather than focus on like a top down approach i'm trying to figure out a good way of doing a bottom up approach so perfect okay. so something i can uh, integrate in my build pipeline yes for example. something yeah, something great. to integrate in your build pipeline uh, if your uh, ciso or your legal person was like we need s bombs now uh, the team doesn't have to go scrambling around you know, looking for tools and infrastructure, they can just be like, here you go. Yeah, but then perhaps we can also have here uh, rather also some some tags or something like, because a graph view, I don't know. Yeah, so in the build pipeline, I just need to detect it and produce, well, uh, processable output, right? And then I might have another tool for the UI or something like that. So Yeah, so there's the, so it seems like we're pretty well covered with the the producing bit, but we uh, are missing we're missing all the other tools, which is like things that will read s bombs and identify like the whether your component has whether your s bomb has a certain component or like give me all of the licenses of all the components of your in that's in the s bomb so it seems to me 
uh, and you can uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong because this is a discussion uh, that we need tools to be able to parse the S bombs and uh, query them. Um, I think there are a lot of them already there. And yeah. There are solutions that can do that. Probably not all of them are open source or fully open source. But however, um, uh, what when, we, when we talk about what is missing, I think one of the very important things is since the S bomb is always outside of what it is uh, talking about, uh, we need the relation in the S bomb to whatever it's uh, actually describing. And this must be something that is uh, st static or un unmodifiable or something so that we can have a s kind of certification mechanism that is allowing me to retrieve or verify whether the S-bomb that I have in hand is associated with my binary or whatever I'm consuming. And uh, I think there's there's a cool solution that we have to take into consideration on the m out now, uh, that's six store. And uh, I think that especially on the production side, the um, the S bomb produ production or production needs to make use of this. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. But what I lo would love to see if that is decentralized, because what my observation is, okay, th we have the Python ecosystem, so we need to wrap around the Python ecosystem to extract their bill of material about if they have a new idea, then we have to follow. Then we have the NPM ecosystem. If they have new ideas, we have to follow. And and and, and so uh, Thomas, he is the best pr practice, uh, best best example. So we have so many things to do in the analyze and so on to always uh, uh, run behind, right? And and they have new ideas, and then we have to adapt. So if we could have incentives for those ecosystems, say, okay, could you please, if you do, have you have new ideas? How you structure your builds, whatever. If you if you develop your ecosystem, please also think ab about S bomb. How we could consume that much easier instead of us thinking about re-engineering the stuff we get from you. Yeah, that would I would love to see that. I really like that idea, and maybe to to add incentive, like have a public page, like which languages are covered are easily work with S bombs or. Um, maybe on on a package level, like where we can report packages that produce incomplete S bombs or are sort of broken, to like naming and shaming the tools and the packages, and hopefully encourage people to act on it. I think they've I think they've tried that before. I I would also please prevent that, <laughs> but I don't want to catch your words. Nisha, just to mention. I think you have one or two more topics. Uh, uh, I think you've already jumped to that topic, which is the ecosystems. Uh, how do you define incomplete S bomb? Because in the SPDX, there is there are fields that are required, and this is the required minimum. So everything else can be added or can be missing. And uh, how do you define in this yeah. context a complete S bomb? Maybe I was more uh, trying to say an incorrect S bomb, or uh -huh. like whole parts are missing. But completeness is a different topic. Yeah, I didn't want to raise that. Uh, how? Why is uh, completeness different from accuracy? Because I have I have completeness in there uh, under accuracy, but maybe you have a different perspective. Um, I think he wants to say something. Behind you. Uh, directly to your question, yes, for sure. I mean, I can be complete but incorrect. And uh, accuracy, I would say, it's combining both, yeah. There was a talk. Uh, yeah, there was a talk on Tuesday, I think, about completeness and correctness. So first ideas, I think that was a good start to look at this. And, and I would uh, add to from the build systems perspective of the ecosystem they are fine yeah okay we listed everything but if you then want to look into it deeper you'll find out okay well but this is a black box right and so there should also be no black boxes anymore it should really go to the source every time so 
well, since we're on the topic of accuracy, uh, most S-bomb tools, licensing is a joke. Mm -hmm. It's literally a all no, full of no assertions. It's all like literally. I, I'm actually currently doing a project where I run a lot of these open source tools and I'm working on generating S-bombs for them every night in the GitHub Actions so we can actually see these things. So the other thing that is kind of missing is actually, and I don't know if you had it in the previous slide half, is that actually the SBOM standards can currently not capture the reality. So the, the standard itself is not capable of making an abstract of what is there. Uh, it's not capable of clearly uh, communicating what's there and what's the, not the there? The reality in code cannot often be captured in an SBOM. Or, well, actually, the, the, let's say rea not re just reality cannot be captured in SBOM because the, the SBOMs cannot only be about codes, it can also be about applications, it can, <coughs> it can be about much more. So, reality cannot be captured because it's a again, I work on SBDX, it's a very complex problem to take something reality and try to abstract it. And then the question is also the second thing is that we we haven't agreed that's what we're going to try to do on how do we model it. So, every tool currently, if you take one simple, say, NPM project with six dependencies. Every tool that you run will make a different dependency graph or, or a different SBOM, even though even if the packages were exactly identical, even if they all agree on the package naming, just how the dependency tree should look like, how reality should be encoded into the SBOM is not defined by any of the standards. Therefore, as a consumer, this is why I think consumers' tools are hindered because how am I supposed to consume this? So I can get the basic package information, but what is the relationship between the packages? Is this a uh, test dependency from this other package? I cannot know because basically every tool encodes it differently. Yeah. It's possible uh, for me to consume. One of the one of the gaps um, Puerco has, oh, I'm sorry, I'm using Puerco. <laughs> uh, Adolfo has uh, identified is uh, that we don't have a common standard of how to express certain artifacts like how like what you said like one person decides like a dependency graph looks like this and another person says no it actually looks like this other thing uh, we have a, we have that problem with containers too because you know we started off early all of us are thinking oh you open up a container and you see all these tarballs okay each one of them is a layer we'll call them a layer and then but some people are like, no, that's a that's an implementation detail. You shouldn't really be caring about that. You should only be caring about ma what's manifested, like at the topmost read-write layer. Um, there are differences in opinions, but we we haven't agreed on what these S bombs for each of these artifacts should look like. Uh, but Adolfo is working on an initial. Um, like a set of semantic uh, semantics for each of those artifacts, and hopefully that would. Adolfo and I are already half blocking. Yeah. I'm working on a project to use all the open source SBOM tools to generate at least all the output, because I got tired of SBOM tools being compared, and one is much more better than the other, and then I actually compare them, and I'm just like, hang on, you don't even produce valid SPDX or SACMDX. How can you be called better if the output is literally not valid? So um, I only have two more, two more, one more minute here. But um, is do you think it's worth getting together to talk about uh, semantics and uh, how one person names a library and how another person names a library and come up with? I, uh, I think that uh, it's a good thing to talk about this, but probably it's not about the naming convention alone. It's uh, also about the meaning of. Uh, what is the package because or what is the component or yeah what we have in a file yeah. because uh, when, when we look into I mean SPDX is allowing us a lot but when we receive inputs um, then we get all and nothing sometimes everything is a component <laughs> yeah and uh, you know from the naming that it's it cannot be a component it's a file or it's uh, used in that area and um, and here uh, we have no, that's probably a point to the accuracy or the guidance of how to use it. Yeah, but um, And uh, depending upon what format you're using, the guidance is different. So it makes it more complicated. 
and, and I don't want to be a spoiler, but what is material, right? Because now with cloud, a SaaS uh, call, uh, if I have now all my components listed and in one component, I have a REST API call, I will never find that. find that in my bill of material that I have a REST call to a SaaS server or something like that. So then the question is, is this just the list of physical material, right? S bomb or is this also then the next level that we also have to have an idea, okay, what's really happening? Yeah. yeah. So, so perhaps I we have should also check the Fasten project there. I have yeah. a point over here where uh, is, is, do we really need an S bomb for use case X? Um, that's, a, that's a topic that everyone is now talking about with cloud. Like, do, does it really apply in this case? Um, my opinion is, well, my opinion is no, but we do need something else for that. Until the data, uh, the data uh, p uh, privacy uh, colleagues will come and say, "Hey, where are you? Where is your data process?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no, no. We, we now have a cloud bomb. We have a SaaS bomb. We can have a privacy bomb. We can have everything bomb. Yes, all the all the bombs. So. Um, in, ele in electronics, there's something called a data sheet. Um, I don't think software has any kind of understanding of what a data sheet is. Um, a data sheet is not a bomb. It's a kind of a, like a general information thing. Okay, I have to stop now. <laughs> is it a question time or do we need to leave? No, it's the end. Oh, it's the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming.